Hi guys, a new video on how to create a quick mirrored landscape text effect in Affinity Photo. Now this is suitable for the desktop and the iPad. So either one, slightly different commands, but you can use it in either situation. Now let's have a look at the image. This tutorial will show you how to use an image texture with clipping and layer masks as well as simple brushes and filters to create a mirrored landscape text effect. So let's get started. This text effect was inspired by the many layer styles available on Graphics River. If you want a quick way to create a mirror effect in Affinity Photo, use one of the simple actions recommended in this article. Now the assets used here uh, are the follow, the Sumac typeface, and that's found on Envato Elements and possibly other places. An image, Foggy Germany, and you can see on the right it's quite foggy, by Christian Grab, and you'll find that on Unsplash. These are mostly free, but you should, of course, um, note who, who you, the image is from. Give credit to Christian Grab. It's an excellent set of photos. Now, Brush Strokes by Unrestricted. Now, these are by Frozen Stocks. They're real smoke brushes. Quite effective. And you'll find them there. Now choosing the right image is essential for this effect to work. A good image will have two contrasting areas that can be mirrored to achieve the effect and one of those areas should have little or no detail. Now you can see the forest on the right there and above it a clear, well, uh, foggy sky. Open the Foggy Germany image, or any other image you choose, actually, in Affinity Photo. Now this image is quite big and in portrait mode, so we need to adjust it slightly. I want to select the landscape part of the image. Now we're going to extract a part of this image. So I'll use the rectangular mark tool to draw out a suitable rectangular section. And you can see it there, the dotted lines and the mark tool on the left hand side there is in highlight. You can see the dotted guide in the image quite clearly there I feel. Now press Command C or Control C if you're using Windows, then Command V or Windows Control V and a new layer will be added containing only the extracted section. Now you can see the whole image there because we've got both images selected in the Layers panel. Turn off the original image layer and leave only the new copy. You can now see the canvas is the wrong size. So let's resize it. Well, it's not actually the wrong size. It's just a huge section of um, blank image and you don't want that there as your final size. So go to Documents and Resize Document. Enter the dimensions of the new cutout image. You can find that in the Transform panel right down the bottom right hand side. Now next, adjust your image to fit the new resize canvas. Simply pull out the handles on the corners and the side to fit it in. You'll find that it stays the exact size that you want it because the original photo is a different size and you're just fitting this into place. It's still the same image, it's not out of proportion, it's all in proportion and will fit. Just take your time with that and get that bit right. Now we enter the text. Create the text using the font Sumac and change the text size to fit it within the document. Now you can see I've got it really large there. Center the text in the image. Um, as you do this you'll see the red and green horizontal and vertical lines will come up behind the word boss and show you when you're exactly dead center on your image. Now duplicate the background layer and drag the copy on top of the text layer so it creates a clipping mask. I'm sure you know how to do that. Just drag the image onto the text and let it go and it will appear in the background. Now it may look a bit odd there, you can't quite see what's happening. It's still the same forest. Now we're going to fix that. Go to Arrange up on the taskbar and flip vertical and ar again arrange flip horizontal. So you're flipping that second copy 
upside down and roundabout, <laughs> vertical and horizontal. Pick the move tool and slightly nudge the texture, that's the forest image, until you like how it looks inside the text. And that's not too bad there. It's You can see it's clearly upside down above the original image. Now, creating a gradient layer mask. Select the text texture layer and click the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. There's probably no real need to do this. You can apply the gradient directly, but I prefer to have it on its own little um, panel. Pick the gradient tool and choose the black and white fill, which I think you'll find is the default in the options bar, and click the linear gradient icon. Select the layer mask's thumbnail. Don't click on the text, click on the thumbnail, remember, and then click and drag from a point close to the outside of the text bottom edge to a point close to its inside. This will slightly fade the lower part of the text. Now I took the line right to the top of the text image there because that's how I wanted it. But you can adjust that to suit whatever you want. Now the finishing touches. Create a new layer on top of all the layers and name it Brush and pick the Brush tool. Set the foreground colour to white and use the unrestricted real smoke brushes to add some smoke around the text so that it blends a bit more with the background. So think of smoke, think of fog. An important part of this step is using different opacity values for the brush layer itself and for the brush tip in the options bar. Here I've changed the layer's opacity value to 50% and used different brush opacity values in the options bar for the brush tips I added. So all of those brush splodges are not exactly the same so, uh, opacity. Now, setting some noise. Noise gives it a, a more natural look. Create another new layer on top of all layers, name it Noise and go to Edit and Fill. That's Edit in the top command bar and click on Edit and click on Fill. Change the contents to 50% grey and click OK. And you can see in the image there um, where I've got that. Change its blend mode to soft light. Now go to filter, noise and add noise. Change the intensity to 100% and the distribution to uniform. And check the monochrome box. You can use another, you can use other amount values, especially if you change the texture's image size. Now, congratulations, you're done. In this tutorial, we used an image texture with clipping and layer masks, as well as simple brushes and filters to create a mirrored landscape text effect. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it.